Hey there guys, it's Prophet, and this is going to be a video on the comparison between gas blowbacks and AEGs, and maybe this will help out people who have not had enough experience with the gas blowbacks as much as the other guys, so you can get some perception on the topic and see maybe if you would like to purchase a gas blowback if you want to stick with your AEG or maybe wherever. Now, we're going to start off with gas blowbacks. They pretty much the main selling point about them is that they are realistic compared to a an AEG. Now, what I mean by that is that there is a functioning bolt where it goes back. There is blowback when you fire the gun, and which provides recoil like a real gun. Also, the magazines they are usually low capacity, which can hold from anywhere from. 20 rounds to 40 rounds and this will make your gun I mean it just adds to realism which can also add to your immersion during airsoft which is the best part about gas blowbacks is that you have a real sense of realism compared to an AEG where you have a 500 round high cap that you can just spray and pray and just keep winding unlike you know a gas blowback which you're gonna have to conserve your shots you know you're usually gonna stick on semi you know, pop a few shots every few seconds maybe or you know every few minutes then go on full auto you know whatever you just have to play the game a lot more conservatively and a lot more carefully which thus will transfer over to more tactical game style which a lot of people like including myself we all start off on AEGs now in it, it, it caters to the realism player compared to the AEG player because I'm going to be blatantly honest right now, gas blowbacks are worse in almost every single way compared to the AEG because of one fact and one fact only and that is magazine capacity. Magazine, or I mean like I also mentioned before, the average high cap for an EEG is around 400 rounds. That's like an M4, AK magazine or whatever. And then the average magazine capacity is about 30 to 40 rounds. I mean, I have an MP7, KWA, 40 rounds. You know, I never full auto, ever. Unless maybe I'm feeling a little bit lucky, you know, if I see a few people. But either way, I'm going to stick on semi-auto so I do not waste my magazine. And you're going to be reloading a lot, you know? Thus, that makes you uh, need to buy more magazines. Now, the problem with buying a lot more magazines, this magazine runs averagely around $50 online, and that is very expensive, and there's a reason why, and that's because they are full metal, very good construction, at least the KWA ones, I cannot say that about the Wii ones, because Wii magazines suck, but, I mean, these are very durable, they are heavy as well, and they have the gas reservoir, Right there, which has the whole entire gas system, and that is where the price comes from, to be honest. And that's what operates this whole entire gun, gun essentially. Now, I wanted to touch on the fact of accuracy about gas blowbacks versus the AEG. Now, I will say for each company, it is different. For KWA, you are going to get most likely a gun that performs better than a stock AEG. I'll say that right now. Because this thing shoots about 430 FPS with a 0.2 gram BB. And even with a 6 inch barrel, this thing shoots literally, not, not joking, no upgrades, 230 plus feet. Which, that is ridiculous straight. This is better performing than my Marui, to be honest. Which, I'm not sure if a lot more people have had the same exact experience. But KWA guns are extremely well made. They're extremely reliable. They're great performers. So in the in that department, you're not gonna have to worry about KWA guns. With Wii Tech stock guns, they are decent. They are just not as good as an AEG. Again, you're gonna need to put maybe tight bores, new hop ups. But a company called RA Tech, they all make the steel parts. If you do end up buying a Wii Tech gun, GMP Western Arms, I've heard are all good things about them. You won't have to worry about them, except that you know they are about five hundred dollars, and I do not feel like. $500 justifies those guns when you can buy a KWA L4 and probably end up getting the same thing, if not better. Now, also, FPS. Guns are going to vary, especially with the cold. The cold will decrease the FPS on an 80 degree day. This thing's going to be 430 FPS on a 60 degree day, most likely 390. 
and 40 degree day, maybe 370. It all depends on the weather on top of that. Green gas usually shoots around 300 to 400 FPS on good days. CO2 can range from anywhere from 350 FPS to 500 because some guns don't regulate the CO2 like KWC. Their older gas blowbacks you shoot about 500 FPS. You know, Dan Weston revolvers shoot about 500 FPS. But Elite Force, they have the pistols, those shoot 350 FPS. Their Uzi shoots like 400 FPS. So it just depends if they are adjusted or not. You're gonna have to check that out for yourself though if you want to be safe about that if you play CQB and or field. Now, another con really to be honest about the gas blowback is reliability. Now, this is not as much of a problem as it was, let's just say, three years ago where WeTech was really the only um, gas blowback company that could make a decent gas blowback. I mean, yes, there was Western Arms, there was GMP, but Western Arms, you had to replace every single damn part if you want to use green gas, but not, nevertheless. Now, there are companies like KWA, there, I mean, KJW's making more gas blowbacks, and these guys are on the low, are in the mid range because we, okay, we tech makes gas blowbacks, they make every single gas blowback, and that's what is cool about them. They add a bunch of recoil, they are really cool. But the opposite of that is that they suck. Like, internally, the parts are made out of pot metal, and they will break after about a thousand to two thousand rounds, and you're gonna have to replace the parts. Replacement parts are expensive I mean the trigger set is usually around a hundred to hundred fifty dollars which is one of the parts that usually breaks on you initially and everything else to follow will just keep breaking because once you put in a steel part into your gun it's gonna rub against the pot metal and that's gonna break off the pot metal and then eventually you're just gonna be replacing every single damn part in your gun until you put about five hundred dollars into your gas blowback and then it's just not even worth it at that point when you can get an AG for about $150. Anyways, that's WeTech though. WeTech, don't buy gas blowbacks from WeTech. I mean, they do make some de damn decent gas blowbacks. Like, there's the G39, that's a good gas blowback. It's just that you're gonna need to do a lot of research. There are companies like KWA that make fantastic gas blowbacks because they've been making them for about four years now. I don't know what their first gas blowback. I mean, they started with their PTP pistols. And then they've been making GBBRs, and they run off of their system called the NS2 system. The NS2 system is pretty much kind of like the Weave uh, system, which there's an open bolt where you know you can see the parts inside like that, so it's a bit more realistic, adding to immersion. But it's reliable as all hell. What you do, is, I mean, basically these mags can hold about two and a half gas fills, or I mean two and a half. Pretty much these mags can hold about two and a half mags until you have to actually refill which is really damn uh, gas efficient and on top of that they work in the cold decently well compared to the Wii uh, gas bowl bags which cannot work anything below 50 degrees. These could work probably 30 and up but I would not recommend it. But still it just adds to the longevity of your gun on top of that the internals are actually very good and you're not going to have to replace them, and, I, I mean, you are eventually, most likely, but that's eventually, that's not, you know, after a thousand rounds, like a Wii Tech gun. Once again, to get to the final point of this, they are there for immersion versus performance. You're going to have to sacrifice immersion, or I mean, you're going to have to sacrifice performance for having a more fun experience, I suppose. I mean, again, that is what you prefer on, though. You don't like having, you know, 40 rounds and having to reload every five minutes, then don't go with a gas blowback. But if you do like the immersion, if you do like the more of a challenge to use these things, then go with the gas blowbacks. But remember, they do not work in the cold all too well. I mean, this you can get away with 40 degrees and up, especially for the people up north like myself. I live in New York and I really like half of the year I'm not going to be able to use this thing. I would recommend going to get one, but they're not for everybody, I'll say that. Now I hope that puts some people's questions to rest on gas blowbacks. If you have any questions, just leave them down below. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll be seeing you guys later.